Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out the Flax Game Edge, and specifically Flax 1.4 was just released, and along with the release, there is this new tech demo we are seeing in action right now. And the biggest thing that this is going to showcase is the new lighting model. So let's go ahead and we shall play it, and uh, let's move the lights around a little bit. So the I, the H and the I key, H, I, no, H, J, all right, so there we go. So we're moving the lights in and out so you get an idea of this new global illumination system that they have added to the game and the effects of the lighting on the game world uh it's it's good looking for sure um this is running at 4k uh the frame rate is only 20 ish frames per second while i am doing video recording there's definitely a need for uh, a bit of anti-aliasing around the edges. It's very clear on these bookshelves over here. Uh, but the biggest thing about this demo is to showcase the new lighting capabilities. And the new lighting capabilities are definitely impressive. So you can see there is a new um, a global real-time global illumination solution in effect here. And if you want to go ahead and check out this demo, it is available for download on their website and also uh, on Steam. So again, uh, this is 4K resolution on a 2070 laptop running, again, around 20-ish frames per second. Uh, it could definitely use a little bit of anti-aliasing, but for the most part, the lighting, I think, looks great. So that is the new feature uh, of this example, and uh, let's jump in and take a look at the actual release notes right now, or as soon as I can exit this demo. All right, so here we are. Let me just go full screen on this one. So 1.4 release notes. What is new? Well, first off, there is this new tech demo. You can check that out yourself. Uh, but the biggest thing here is, again, the new real-time global illumination. Uh, this is using a DDGI, DDGI algorithm with scrolled probes volumes around the camera utilizing so custom software ray tracing. It does not require an RTX-ready GPU. Uh, so you can run this with AMD, no problem at all. Uh, together with global surface cache, we can simulate GI effects and dynamic environment where lighting conditions are constantly changing, such as time of day like you saw in action in that particular video. So again, uh, that is available for download. You will find that it actually runs substantially better if you're running at like 1080p resolution. It's the 4K that really kind of killed it on a per pixel basis. Um, on top of that, there are some pretty major changes to the way the licensing works. So we've gone over, that used to be, uh, you would have to pay a 4% revenue share over every 25K per quarter. Uh, they have bumped that by a factor of tenfold. So um, it's now $250,000 you can earn per quarter for free. So if you spread it out evenly over a year, you can make a million dollars before you have to pay anything. Uh, beyond that, you pay 4% beyond that amount. So for example, in this example given, if you make 30K in the quarter, you're going to pay 4% of that 50K, which would be 2K. Yeah, it's definitely, um, it puts it more in line with Unreal Engine's type of pricing, and you don't pay a cent until you actually make well, at least $250 a quarter. So that's pretty generous. Another nice new feature of this one is the addition of 64-bit world coordinates. Um, it gives you a ton of precision on how things work. So mostly you would only ever use this if you were making like a universe scale style game. And 32-bit 30 32-bit coordinate systems do really kind of get into your way when you're dealing with something like No Man's Sky, for example. Uh, so 64-bit precision support for world coordinates have been added so you could make ginormous uh, universe scale worlds now uh, with this new coordinate system. We also have global sign distance fields. Uh, so SDFs, uh, in order to implement real-time GI, we needed a way of tracing through the scene to simulate light transport for diffuse light bounces. Um, we decided to use sign distance fields, which provides an, uh, an efficient way for ray tracing. To do it, we rasterized model SDFs into an array of volume textures uh, to provide up to 10 centimeter precision near the camera and 200 and at distances of 200 meters or more. Uh, this gives a rough approximation of global scene geometry and can be used for software ray tracing, um, global SDF in context. Uh, so additionally, the benefits of maintaining global SDF for a whole scene is the ability to use it in materials, particles, and shaders. Added a new sample global SDF and global SDF gradient nodes to materials and particles for simulating SDF that for sampling SDF at any position. Also, particle emitters now have a new module for global SDF collisions and global SDF forces to uh, drive realistic VFX solutions, as you can see right here. So that's actually pretty cool as well. Uh, improvements to uh, crowd navigation. So you can see uh, crowds used to just kind of face hump when they came into each other. Now the navigation system is smarter that they kind of get through. Now, if this was the real world, at least two of them would be trying to 
to fight each other right now. But still, uh, on top of that, we've got rich text formatting improvement. So uh, adding HTML HTML tag formatting with styling layout and inline image support notably makes it easier to style text in UI. Definitely nice there. Uh, improvements to the visual scripting system, added dictionary support, new editor features for easier script editing as well. Finder tools, new finder tool allows you to quickly search through anything in graph or even in all scripts in a project. Um, also, re uh, reroute, that's a hard word for me to say for some reason today, reroute node got more usability and now can be easily connected to other nodes, including multiple input outputs, uh, improve reusing graph parts and help organizing visual scripts or material graphs. I actually do enjoy the visual scripting in uh, the Flax engine more so than I did, for example, with um, Godot before they axed it. So um, I, I'm not an anti-visual scripting guy, so it's nice to see improvements in that regard. Uh, screen space reflections for transparency. You see the results of on and off in action there. Uh, nested animations, it's create subclips or composites, AKA montages. Uh, it makes it easy to reuse existing animation assets. Um, a noise utility added in, and then we've got some migration guides for uh, how to deal with all of the new stuff here. So definitely a nice release. You got that new tech demo you can check out. Again, it's also available on Steam if you wish to grab it there. Um, also, uh, the change, massive changes to the license. Basically, you can make 10 times the money you used to be able to before. Large coordinates, 64-bit world coordinates, global SDFs also implemented uh, in uh, particles and, and VFX. That definitely is nice there. Improvements to crowd navigation, rich text format being HTML5, or HTML, I really want to add that 5 for some reason. But again, across the board, a pretty nice update for a pretty nice engine. If you've never checked out Flax Engine before, do check it out. I've got a couple of videos on it from the past. Uh, it is available at FlaxEngine.com. Uh, it is source available, uh, but it is not open source. So the license is under its own uh, license. Do be sure to check that one out. Uh, but this is uh, a source available engine. So if you need to change something or fix something, you can. You'll also see there's a decent sized community of people contributing to it as well. Uh, this update. Uh, literally just went live uh, if you're interested in going ahead to check it out. But again, uh, I do like it being source available over not source available. Just to be aware, it is obviously not, um, it's not uh, a completely open source project. So the, the source available and open source are different things. Just one of those things to be aware of. Um, there are instructions for building it on all major platforms. So Windows, Linux, and Mac for all you happy people on all kinds of different platforms. That is one of the things that changed from the very beginning. If I recall, originally this was Windows only. So it's nice to see those other platforms getting some love as well. Um, Again, the tech demo is also available for download on their site. Uh, you can download it right there. I'd be interested to hear what kind of um, performance you're getting from it. I, I do uh, like the look of Global Illumination. If, correct me if I'm wrong, but this form of Global Illumination that they went with, uh, this um, DDGI algorithm, I do believe that is also the same algorithm that Godot 4 is using for its real-time Global Illumination. But again, if I'm wrong, do let me know in the comments down below. It looks pretty good. I honestly think uh, this is a nice engine. Uh, I would highly recommend checking out if you haven't already, especially if you're looking for like an alternative C-sharp programming kind of engine. And this one is uh, also, again, there is that visual scripting as well, uh, but also newer, nicer licensing terms. So if you're making more than $250,000 a quarter, that's a very, um, you know, sizable amount of money for most people before you even have to start paying a royalty and then four percent that's in line with or better than what you pay for unreal engine at this point in time so let me know what you think flax engine flax engine 1.4 available now all right that's it talk to you all later goodbye